from the rabbi. It's been a long break. It's been a long All break. We've been busy. Wow. Been really busy. Really busy. And here we go. We're we're starting back in a new season. A new season. Back at the beginning again. Right. All the way back at the beginning. Let's just let everybody know there's going to be a lot of surprises, great things, guest hosts, different things happening this season. I, w- I would stick around. Don't miss an episode because this is going to be a big season. Absolutely. It's going to be a Absolutely. good one. Absolutely. So we're starting at creation right at the beginning, the seven days of creation. Mm-hmm. Six days of work, one day of rest. i got to tell you, Rabbi Friedman, probably this is where we lose everybody. Th- of every story, of everything in the Torah, this is where we lose most people right here. It's, it's a tricky one. You know, is it not scientific? Uh, you know, I don't understand it. And it's bad enough you start out with, you know, God hanging the moon and the sun on the morning of the second day. Is that right? Did I get that right? Fourth day. Fourth day, somewhere around yeah, there. Yeah. It was one of those days. You know, we got a 48-hour work week and God takes care of everything. Mm-hmm. You think that's bad enough. And then you get to the, what, the sixth day, the sixth day, the day of misogyny. The war on women begins on the sixth day. Mm-hmm. You know, man's created first. Uh, he looks at every single animal, can't find an animal he likes best, so we decide to make a woman out of a rib. Mm-hmm. First thing she does, she takes charge, ruins the whole thing. Paradise over. That's all gone. And the next thing you know... Uh, Hillary's talking about 70 cents on the dollar for every man hour compared That's to man hour for the rest of the world. Creation, Hillary. Hillary, like right, right there. One shot. I one shot. So there's right the world there. women. They're getting paid 70 cents on the yeah. dollar just because the, this whole thing and God says, and then she'll have to be subservient to man. Mm. So I got to tell you, it's, it's a tough, tough six days. You lose a lot of the, the agnostics kind of take off in these six days because it's kind of hard to explain. Mm-hmm. What is the deal with the six days? Is it really six days? Do we really rest on the seventh day? Is there any other explanation, or what's going on with that? Like, how about starting at the very beginning? Why days? That's a good question. Why days? Billions of years would have been better. Maybe. How about, and God created the world and everything that was in it. And then there was man. And, you know, just move on. I mean, right? there's like God created. Right. Ta-da. And there it was, and, you know, he just says, voila. And, you know, there's a deer sipping uh, water out of a stream, you know? Right. Like, it just, everything would be wonderful. Yeah, the day thing is right. kind of throws everything off. Yeah, what's with the days? Why days? Why six and then seven? You know, what's it all about? And as a matter of fact, if you read the story, it says, And God completed on the seventh day all the work that he had done on the six days. What do you mean he completed on the seventh day? It says on the seventh day he rested. What did he make on the seventh day? That's another good guy. I don't know. How did he complete it? At the end of six days he was done. He was done, yeah. He was resting. So what did he do with it? How did he complete it on the seventh day? It says, Vayechal Elohim, Vayom Ashvi. And God completed on the seventh day, Malachto, all of his work. And then it says that he had done, which is also problematic. Why didn't it say God completed all of his work? First of all, he completed his work at the end of the sixth day. He did six days worth of work, and that's it. How did he complete it on the seventh day? You work for six days, and you take the seventh day off. Okay, you don't complete the six days on the seventh day. No, that's a little, that's a little right. odd, right. And what do you mean, and all the work that he had done? What's that all about? So, really, these numbers, they have to be significant. Right, right. They have to be significant. So, what do we got? Six. He did it in six days. Why didn't he just do it? Poof. Okay. Because he could. Step number one, by the way. Step number one. And by the way, within the six, there were ten steps. Okay, right. If you read it very carefully, if you read it very carefully, it says, when it says, and God did, he actually did ten things on this, in the six days. Okay, and ten, you know, ten is already a wholeness. The first idea that we have to appreciate is that God made things in steps or in stages. God didn't just go poof. The reason he didn't go poof, and we talked about this way back at Passover time, we talked about the ten plagues. Right. The reason God just didn't do it all at once is because it when it's broken into pieces, we can understand it or appreciate it. If it's one seamless whole, you can't figure it out. Just like, let's say you know something's wrong with my bicycle or anything. I open it up, I look inside, I see, the, I see what's wrong, or the chain came off, or whatever it is, right? Let's say something's wrong with your computer. You open it up and you look at it. You see a motherboard. Like, what is that? I don't see, and there are no moving pieces. There are no parts. Yeah, it's just like, 
It's just one thing. I can't tell anything about it. I can't figure out how it came to be. Since God created it in successive episodes, right. we can, it's broken down into pieces and we can analyze it. So it's more also, of an analog world than a digital world. Yeah, right? so we have, and we you can it. also, by the way, right. misanalyze it. Yeah, yeah. Because you could think, oh, pieces that must have evolved. Right? But at least it can be analyzed. So that's the first thing. But now let's take a look at it. Why six? Okay? Okay, so look at this very carefully. One, two, three, four, that's four, five, and six. Or I could turn the whole box over there. You see it better right. that way? Right, 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 gotcha. Okay, six sides. You got a cube. Doesn't even have to be a cube. Figure the four points of the compass and one up and one down. Let's say it's, it's a plane and it's made of like gooey stuff and I go like... So it's a 3D thing. To yeah. Kind of 3D so I have this flat everything. with the four points and then I add two more. So I'm like... Gotcha. Right. Now... You have a lot of sound effects today, by the way. That's <laughs> right. I was working on this over the weekend. <laughs> you can see this, this is good. This is <laughs> okay. Next sound right. effect. Right. So now I stretch this right. thing out and inside... And now I have an inside. Right. I have a space. No, I see that, yeah. I have a space. By doing six, I create a space. What's in the space? Us? I don't know. What is in the space? Is that it? You got it. Oh, wow. God created a space for us to be in, in the wow. physical world. Wow, okay. And that's what he did with the six. He added this, that, this, and that. He made a space. Well, what goes inside the space? I mean, you don't know. The space is the spirit of it inside by this is the fascinating thing this is really and if you really want to get down to the core of what judaism talks about what is going on in life here in this world life in this world is a synthesis of the spiritual and the physical or perhaps better yet said it is the spiritual inside a physical container which is an amazing thing. Yeah, it is. That's interesting. Every morning, we say a prayer. We talk, and in this prayer, it says, God, the soul that you gave me is pure. And we talk about who returns the souls to dead corpses. Well, you know the story of Adam, right? Took the whole pile of clay and all that, and he formed it into a man. And then what did he do? Blew life into it. He blew into it the spirit of life, nishmas chayim, the soul of life. You take an inanimate object, and into it you put a soul. Now, where is the space that's occupied by the soul? Well, it's, the soul is spiritual, so it doesn't right, really occupy right. a space. But on the other hand, he blew into it. So that means there has to be an in. So he creates right. a container and into the container, he fills it up with something spiritual. And amazingly enough, that which is spiritual is contained by that which is physical, until which time it stops being contained. And God takes it back out, another sound effect there. And when he <laughs> sucks it back out, the physical becomes inert. Right. When right. he blows it in, then the physical is active. It's moving, it's doing, it's, it's, it's got vibrancy, it's dynamic. Sucks it out, it's nothing. Same thing as the world. He created this world, six days. Nothing. It's got nothing. He puts man into it, it's now active. Six days. The six days are really a container. But what goes the container? It's an empty container. On the seventh day, he created something called the Shabbos. It says, Uvayom hashvi'i, and on the seventh day, it says in the Shabbos, Vayinafash. This is later on in Exodus, there's a verse. It says, on the seventh day, God rested and was invigorated or enlivened. So interesting. He rested and he was enlivened. When God put the Shabbos day, the day of rest, inside the other six days, that's the space inside the six, then the whole thing came alive. Because oh, the okay. six only work because the seventh are not working. The seventh is the spirit of the day. Well, okay, well, that's, that's a little interesting. I'm trying to wrap my head around that one. Right. So, so bottom line, 
up until even when man is created on the earth. There's not really much, there's, no, there's nothing there. But Inert. again, but, but God does blow the spirit, the soul, into man on the sixth day. Right, he blows the soul <laughs> into man on the sixth day after he creates the container Right. on the sixth day. Now, he's already created the container, then he puts his soul into it. That's God's way. You create a container and you fill it up with soul. Just like six days he created the world, on the seventh day he created the Shabbos. Even man, with his soul in him, if, he hadn't, if God hadn't put the soul into the world, right. some man would have been nothing. As a matter of fact, there is a passage in the Zohar, Kabbalistic idea, that the world was supposed to end after six days. What kept it going? Only God's creation of the seventh day invigorated it so that it would, he, he created six days, and you know what? It was just running, it was basically like had battery power. The battery right. runs down. After six days, the battery would be out. But you know what he did? On the seventh day, he plugged it into the main power source. Wow. And therefore, the whole thing's invigorated. And not only that, now that he plugged it in, it can go another six days. Not much more than another six days, though, because then you get another Shabbos. Oh, then he gets a recharge. Another six days wow. gets a recharge. Okay. So what is the seventh day doing? What God did was on the seventh, he created the seventh day. So what did he do? He completed on the seventh day all the work that he did. Because up until now, all the work that he did, you know what it would be like? It would be something akin to picture the build at Disney World. Right. Got the whole Disney Worlds out there, right? You got, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, that's all I do, right? Right, right, right. It's a small world after all. Right. Right. Everyone's doing a thing, okay? They built the whole thing. The only thing is they haven't flipped the master switch. Uh. No electricity, right? So they flip it on. All of a sudden, it's a small no, world after all. Now, come nighttime, they turn it off. Everyone goes home. Right. It's a small world. Next morning, they come back. After all, right. it's... Right? Right, right. They turned the whole thing off. It's the power, the juice that runs the whole thing is the seventh day. So it's sort of like, I don't know if you had this growing up, that, that, that football game that you got with all the little pieces. Yeah, and they all but, Right, but you, and you can, so the first six days, you're setting up the pieces exactly where you want them to be. Right. You know, your offense set up, your defense That's set up, right. but it's just sitting there. Right. So when I flip the switch, then it starts switch. vibrating Everything, all over the place. Everybody starts moving and they fall that's, over. And that's all that's that's right. So that's what Shabbos is. Right. right the Shabbos ah. is flipping the switch. So God completed on the seventh day, when he rested, right. he put the soul into the other six days. He turned them on. Boom. He charged it. And then we start vibrating all over the field. And everything starts happening. Wow. If, if it wasn't for Shabbos, those six days wouldn't be worth a, a darn. Wow. And the same, just like man. If man didn't have a soul in him, he wouldn't be worth anything. What would he be? Just an inert body. That is the amazing thing. Like, why does the body die? You know, why does it die? And the soul leaves. Like, why? You know, what happened? The soul leaves. That's when, that's when, all, when, when, a, person, when a person dies, there's like, what, what makes them start? What makes the whole thing start? Where does life come from? You know, all these big questions. So this is where God comes in. God is that spark. Even um, Frankenstein. Right. Even Frankenstein. You know, in the movie, like, he, was, yeah, he built him, he built him, built him. If it wasn't for that lightning bolt, right, right. like, what would get it started? Well, he still true. needed that external source right. to charge it, to turn it on. That's exactly what that lightning bolt was. Interesting. So we, well, uh, this kind of gets me some questions. So even though on that sixth day, and obviously on the sixth day, I mean, man, God creates man, breathes his soul into man, yeah. man fails, does every, eats the apple, does everything right. in the whole sixth day. Right. But that happened in the sixth day. It didn't happen right. in the seventh day. And you know what? At the end of the sixth day, right. man... Adam, and Eve, right. and their kids, and the whales, and the monkeys, and the uh, termites, as well as the hydrangeas, and the ants, and the sun, it was all going to be turned off. Wow, that was the end of it. Done. Adam, done. Nice try. Thank you. Goodbye. All over with. Wow. Right? I didn't know this. I didn't know this. Yes. All going to be over. God created the Shabbos, created the Sabbath, and in that, he says, okay, here's how we're going to keep this thing perpetuating. We're going to create the Sabbath. And you know what happens? We have a tradition that Adam 
then saying the song, Mizmor Shir, Liyom HaShabbos. He's saying the song for the Sabbath day. Adam was, whoa, what is this? Adam thought, this is all done for. We're all done. And then he saw the Shabbos. He saw it was invigorated. And as a matter of fact, it was a tremendous inspiration to him because Adam thought he was done for. He had sinned. You know, he got his one shot. Right. You know, his, uh, his, his, his one hour of fame. Right. Blew it completely. Uh, now he thought, well, okay, that's it. I'm all done. We're all going to die. It's all done. And the Shabbos came along, and he was reinvigorated, and, and there was life there. And he realized that by God's creating the seventh day, meaning he put spirit into the box. Adam is just a box if he didn't put in his soul. All six days is just an empty box, even with Adam, without the Shabbos put into it. Now, so, so are we worried every, every week here when it comes to Friday night that we're going to get plugged back in? or what's the, So, what's the you know, if it, the, the orientation is, you know, we think like some people will say, well, you know, the Shabbos is over. I'm looking at my watch, you know. It's okay. The watch in the sun, three stars out in the sky. Right. All right, good. Now I can start to live again. <laughs> well, no, as a matter yes, of fact, me. you were just <laughs> living now. Now that three stars are there, actually things are going to start running down. Yeah, you're so, living yeah. off the recharge. Wow. You know, like you're really excited. You know, you unplugged your phone. You had your phone charging overnight. Okay. Well, oh, good. You know, now, now the phone can start working. No, no, no it's, it's, it's really all about that charging. Working, this was right. where it was all at. On that Shabbos, then that seventh day is where you get in the charge. And that has to go. You have to create this, the box. And into the box, you can put the spirit. Now, the beauty of the thing is that that shouldn't work logically. Physical box, spiritual spirit, that shouldn't go. So the whole Jewish thing is that's what God did. When he made creation, God says, I'm going to take the spirit and I'm going to actually contain it within a physical uh, space. And that is the, that's the world. And actually, wow. when you get into it, if you want to talk about space, that's where we had a temple. Why did God build a temple? Because as a temple was a place where you could go and actually palpably feel the spiritual presence. But each and every one of us is also a box, you know, and, and, and a container. Well, right. And into that container is our spirit. How can you have spirit in a physical container? It's an amazing thing. That's what we're all about. That's why six and then seven. Where are the six? Six sides. What is seven? The space inside. Inside of them. Interesting. Well, now, <clears throat> I might as well, since, you know, since we're talking about the seven days, and, I, and that's, that's a different explanation than I've ever heard, but I might as well bring up the, the question that probably a lot of people have. Is it, because the way you explained it, is that metaphorically six days and seven days, or is it literally a 24-hour day? Does, and now that we know that six and seven mean something else, does that mean the whole concept of it the doesn't necessarily. Or? It doesn't necessarily mean something else. It could. Right. It could, but it doesn't necessarily. I'm only explaining why did God do this in six phases. Right. Now, how long were those phases? Yeah, so the, there is a popular approach right now which says it depends whether you're looking at it externally or internally because time moves differently. So says Mr. Einstein. If you are external to the, uh, us, yeah. to the event or internal to the event. Like, for example, let's say you're talking Big Bang. You know, at the point of Big Bang, everything was moving slow. If you're an external observer to the Big Bang, so when it bangs, everything's shooting out at like zillions of you know, warp speeds and all right. that stuff. But inside, everything's moving slow, I think, if I have my physics right. And if I right. don't have my physics right, it's because I don't know too much physics. That's why I wouldn't have it right. That, that makes sense, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm really, Sounds good to me, though. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just going to agree with you. That's what they tell me. Right. You know? Right. But, but just also because, you know, I wonder about the number six and seven. We use the concept of a week multiple times in the Torah. Obviously, mm -hmm. with you, you talk about a week again of the, oh, with, with Jacob and his wife. You talk about a week. You talk about a week. Where else? I know there's a couple other times. I think with the Shemirta. The Shemirta, the Shemirta seven time, is all over the place. If you want to start doing sevens in the Torah, I mean, it's everywhere. They even call it a week, though. They actually use yeah. the word a week right. with, with right. Jacob and, in, and in, with this. Interestingly you know. enough, the whole world has been on this week thing for a long time. Yeah, Everybody does it. And people have tried to do, you know, it would make much more sense to have three 10-day sets. Right. You know, why don't we just go with, with, with 10 days? That is odd. And, There's you know, no, no culture. And it would be a perfect, it would right. fit to the month. 
Because, you know, 4 times 7, you're always off. We've got to get 4.33. <laughs> <laughs> right. Seven, you right. Know, right. You're always off, you know. Three tens would be much closer, you know, than, than four sevens. And there have been cultures that have tried to do the tens or fives or whatever it is, you know. It never works out. How come? I think even in China they're doing sevens. What do they do sevens for? Why does everyone do seven? Because seven is, expresses exactly the reality of the world. Well, that's true. The reality yeah, that of the world sense. is this world is a container and it contains a spirit in it. The six sides create a container, okay? And that's exactly what we do. We go through those six phases, um, you know, and we sing that, that this is uh, on Friday night. We have a ceremony whereby we, re we recite six psalms, and then we accept upon ourselves the Shabbos. Why do we recite six psalms? Of course, one for each day. But the week is very important. The week that we function in is the structure, the physical structure, within which we can put the spirit. And that is what we are all about. We are all about having spirit inside the physical. That's so, you know, where are we? We're spiritual beings, we're physical beings. Well, we here ultimately are spiritual beings, but in this world, we are phys spiritual in a physical structure. No. No, very interesting. I guess, you know, I've never heard it exactly relayed like that. And, and, it, make, and it makes sense, and it also, you know, it, it, it gives the whole, uh, the whole concept of the six makes a lot more sense now. Why six days, six periods, six steps, six stages? Now, if you're not it. doing seven, you know, you, it's like you went to bed at night and you didn't plug in your phone. Yeah, that's not good. And you wake up, Tomorrow, you got a problem. Tomorrow, you, this is not going to be, you're going to be running around, is there, uh, is, where is there, you know, you're looking for an outlet, well, that's not you know, or thing. you're sitting in the airport and you're, you're dead, you know, like, see, so you're, you're messed up. So that's why we have this whole idea of seven. Seven is to appreciate the spirit that is within the other six. So really, we're doing the six. The problem is, if there wasn't six, we never would recognize the spirit. Because we live in a physical world. The spirit contains, is, is contained by the physical. So the physical and our physical endeavor throughout the six days is really important. Because if God just made it spiritual and we were in a physical world, we'd never get it. We have to confine or define, why didn't God make it spiritual seven days a week? Uh, yeah, good point. We would yeah. never get it. We have to do six days of work wherein we build the box so that we can now come into that on the seventh day. And that's what we talk about on the seventh day, all your work is done. You work for six days and on the seventh day you rest. Well, you only can rest if you're working for six days. Right. You know, you eat the fruits of your labors. That's when you feel the spirit of it when you stop the rest of the world and just go with the spirit that invests it. Then you see how the spirit fills up the world. But the other six days, you don't see it. Only when you get the box completed do you see the spirit. But, but what we have it, and we hold on to it for six, well, for those six days, and you know, hopefully we hold on to all of it. And yeah, and then you take from Shabbos right. to the next week. Right. And, and that's where they talk about this idea of all of Israel would, would uh, keep one Shabbos. Then they talk about all of Israel would keep two Shabbos. In other right. words, all we really need is Israel wow. to embrace the Shabbos. Then we will have the perfect experience, we will understand what is the spirit of life. We'll, we will have gotten there to well, understand the core of what is the spirit of life. Wow. All right, you got me on this one. Well, I, now, you know, there is good. a project coming up. Ah, not this weekend. Right, right. Not this weekend, but next weekend, there is a big endeavor going along all around the world. People are trying to get other Jews to one time, just one time, experience what it is to step back like God did from the physical world and complete the physical world by experiencing the spirited part of the physical world, which is the Shabbos. Well, well so that's the, now if, so you're saying if every Jew did that next where the next is a week we got after, it, then, then we're home. That's it. Then we we're have, done. then we will have realized wow. what creation was all about. And the impact, the spiritual impact of that will be so strong, we believe, that uh, the world would be unalterably set on its course towards wow. completion. But it all starts with a Jew grasping the spiritual. So everyone's been working all six days of the week. Yeah, yeah. Now's the time to grasp the spirit that is within those six days 
and that is the space inside, which is the Shabbos. Wow. All right. So, wow, not good. this coming weekend, but the weekend of uh, the 20th, 23rd, something like that, 3rd or 4th, yeah. yeah. That would be the weekend. You can do it at home. You can do it with other Jews. You can do it anywhere. Or you can get online and look for the Shabbos Project. And that will tell you all kinds of stuff to do. And you can find local people and they will be glad to do it with you or do it on your own. And Israel will then invigorate. Fill the box. You build the box, fill it up with the spirit, the space. Fill the space up with the spirit of Shabbos. Wow. This is biggie. I thought this was all going to be about Hillary. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. Wow, good stuff. Once good stuff. again, you know, it's amazing how Hillary becomes irrelevant. <laughs> she is definitely irrelevant to this whole Shabbos thing. Yeah. Wow. All right, I like this one. This is Pass this one around to your friends. This is just episode one. Next week we might have some extra oh, props. Oh, yeah, right. A priest, a rabbi, maybe a reverend, and a, <clears throat> and a Buddhist monk. We're going right. to have them all next week. In the box. In the box. Right, see, we don't want to get out of the box. Right. We want to be in the in box. In the box. All right. Well, we'll see you next week.